Undeads. Undead has so many strategies and ways of their strategies, and the number of towers you make can make or break your game. And you need towers. It's a tower matchup, so you gotta remember that. But you just gotta remember that the amount of towers you make is very important and it's very influential. So right now, this guy is making what he thinks is an adequate number of towers. This is the exact reason why I would have made more towers, to be totally honest. Um, this shit that the panda's doing is really fucking annoying. And I pretty much hate it. Damn. Damn it. <laughs> Merc abuse and then panda. The thing with the panda is, once he hits a high level like this, um, he's just gonna keep using all that extra resource he has to just mass mana potions. Uh, if anyone missed it, Breath of Fire and Haze kills peasants faster than pretty much every th anything in this game. So, it's pretty important for you as a human player to realize that the panda is a force to be reckoned with and he will run in and kill every single one of your peasants and it's really not that difficult so it's a good idea to generally just make a lot of towers and keep them nice and spread out because if you have all your towers in one big lump the panda's just gonna run in breath run out breath you know, he's gonna run back and forth breath firing units and there's really gonna be nothing you can do about it so it's pretty important to be doing that um, very important what, uh, huh. this guy just did get his MK and bought three towers. Uh, pocket towers are really great. I like to keep, I always, use, I almost always, versus undead, just get three of them as soon as my MK comes out. Because what you can do with all those towers is just, you can create an expo, you can harass him, harass his expo by just building some towers there and forcing the undead to return back to his base. Um, you can fortify expansions much quicker than you normally would be able to, and just generally play better. Like you, you, they're very versatile, and also you can use them to get out of surround. But that's kind of complicated. You could probably do a search in the human section for every tower escaping surrounds and stuff like that because it is very possible. Uh, the thing that Fab is doing right now, it's very much annoying. Sky is keeping him from. Really, the main thing it's doing is it's keeping him from being able to utilize the resources as expansion. If you look, this guy, I mean, he's a thousand lumber, thousand gold, but he only has two peasants mining, and he's had to rebuild, like, eleven peasants. Like, that is so, like, that's an exaggeration, or maybe it's not, maybe it's too little. But, I mean, he's had to rebuild all these peasants, and it's just like, you know, Jesus... It's just epic how difficult it is, you know, to be able to just, you know, how difficult it is to keep this expansion up when the panic keeps running in breath of firing, and it's just great harassment by Fav. And really, Sky's handling it the best he can. I would have personally had my MK around the towers, as opposed to bringing him with me. Maybe it was worth it for that half bar of experience. I don't think it is, personally. I feel as if... If the MK would have been around the towers, every time the panda came in to boff, he could have just bolted him, and then the panda would have been like, oops, I'm going to get hit by these towers for three seconds, and his harass would have been like 10% as effective. So, generally speaking, I think um, that might have been a mistake on Sky's part, really, it's hard to say. Uh, at this level of play, uh, I hesitate to call anything a mistake, because really, at this point, their mistakes are much less mistakes, rather than just their opponents playing better, or luck. So here comes the panda again, being a faggot, and he's gonna run in... And if you look what this guy did, he put this arcane right in front. Um, this is incredibly intelligent, because every time the panda runs in to get to the gold mine, he's not going to be able to, because there's gonna be that panda just chilling there, owning him. Or there's gonna be the arcane chilling there, and it's just gonna own him, every time. So that's pretty important, I guess. A good point. Versus a panda, you always want to have an arcane tower. Even if it's a panda second, you want to have an arcane tower or two at both your bases. Uh, he goes try hero uh, versus undead. You want to go try hero every game. This is pretty basic stuff, in my opinion. Um, what's important about what Sky's doing right now is he's buying time, really. This is going to be a very difficult game for Sky. Um, Sky really, truly outplays Fav in this game. More so than really any other time. 
because they're on equal gold. Two pl undead and human on equal gold is a very difficult matchup. It isn't this like, haha, you know, uh, undead versus human. I have two minds, you have one. Now it's balanced. It's it's hard now. It's hard for the human player. And yeah, staff micro sky. Uh, that was weird. He didn't staff his griffin. But uh, um, pretty much at this point, I would say that it's a pretty undead favorite currently. Uh, he's a level 6 panda, which is absolutely disgusting. Uh, has an echo scouting both these mines. Honestly, <sighs> I feel as if he should have just gotten shade, but his choice. And if you look, this is very standard as well. Um, Sky is solo creeping his MK and Paladin, so they level up faster than the AM. Now, he is going to be going uh, gyros this game. You have to be very weary going gyros in a game like this, mostly because Panda uh, rapes gyros very hard, uh, very easily. So it's really hard to say, like, if really tanks or gyros are better because the panda can just hit a tank. And then, like, you just saw that panda. I think he wasted his breath of fire there personally. He shouldn't have done it. But I mean, really, I mean, what the panda and these destroyers are now going to do is completely decimate this expo very easily. And there is nothing that Sky can do about it. Now, really, Sky made the decision here of not massing towers which may have been absolutely useless and instead uh... going for units which I, I don't know going for units in this situation kinda doesn't make a lot of sense to me because you need this expansion to win and now this is the part where um... wow man those elements give so much freaking HP but pretty much I'd say that at this point I guess Sky is doing alright but with so few uh, gyro uh, really those destroyers are a lot more powerful than they were and if you look at them they only do 19 to 21 magic right? Yeah. no but I would say that at this point it's very difficult for Sky to keep his army alive because look at these destroyers just like run in and then mana 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 and all those gyros are basically dead and he has to take them all home so it's you know it's one of those things where you make you, you make a decision you say okay I can either make a lot of towers and I can stall for time and then by stalling for time I can either use that advantage and trick the undead and then go make a second expansion right away and then once I make that second expansion right away uh, I can tower that to hell, go to tier 3, make a 100-100 food army, and then fight the undead. That's one way of doing it. Um, that works as long as you make tanks to harass extra undead expos which are bound to occur. And uh, this guy just made a pretty big error here. And he's going to lose units like hell. And he's not really opting to staff anything out. So, I mean, you could say it's bad play by this guy. I would more say that it was just guy being sloppy wasn't really keeping his focus